For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. Now, pastor, why do you freak out about a man? He's only a man. The awesome thing about this man, I told you many before, many times before, is that this man was God becoming a man, putting himself in a sinful woman, put a, a, his own seed, which is the Holy Spirit seed, into the womb of a woman that was a sinner. Because every person, even if they say, Holy Mother of God, speaking about Mother Mary, there is only one that is holy and that is God. Say, so only one, and that is God. Amen? So Mary was an awesome woman, but definitely not holy because she was also born from Adam. And in her genes and in her bloodline was Adam and a few others, like I told you before, a gentle prostitute and a king who committed adultery with his faithful general's wife and then killed him in battle, allowed him to be killed. I mean, say Jesus, the man, became, became, got born through a sinful woman. I mean, born through a sinful woman. Say the man Jesus came to save. Now listen, when God became a man, he became fully man. Don't compromise on this. Do not have a swapped idea in your head that maybe he was a little bit stronger than us. Physically, he was not stronger than me at all. Not at all. But he had a sinless nature. Say to God, said, this is, is an advantage. But you know, he had a disadvantage comparing to Adam. Because Adam had a sinless nature, but also a sinless body. Jesus had a sinless nature, but a sinful body. So his challenge was far greater than the challenge that Adam had faced. Why was it necessary? Because Jesus had not only to pay for Adam's sin, but for the sin of the whole human race. Say, a bunch of sinners, like me and you. Amen? Amazing grace. He represented you, my friend. I mean, so that you are able today to represent him. So I'm one with Jesus. I'm one with the king. Hallelujah. Okay. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, listen, everyone die in Adam. I mean, so in Christ, say the last Adam, so in Christ all will be made alive. All who believe in him. Say all who believe in him. All, all who believe in him will be made alive. You are already alive. Amen. Say to God, I see the life of Jesus in you. Amen. When the enemy attack you and lie to you, don't believe his lies. I see the life of Jesus in you. Amen. No matter what the devil tell you, the devil will tell you, oh, you're still a sinner. Look what you do. That, that. You know, the devil is, is an evil, evil, evil person who play very unfair. You're not a sinner anymore because you, Jesus has paid the price for you and you joined yourself to Jesus. Anyone who joined himself to Jesus is not a sinner anymore. Although we grow out of our weaknesses. Say, we grow out of our weaknesses. As we believe more and more in Jesus. The job is done. But we grow, as we grow out of our weaknesses as we believe more and more in Jesus. Is your faith still growing? Ask the guy next to you. Is your faith still growing? Huh? In your mistakes, you grow out of your mistakes. You grow out of, you learn from every mistake, bro. Donkey. Yes, I'm not very silly mistake, Mark. Amen? Donkey, he says. Amen? Now stop blaming yourself. In Jesus' name, you are forgiven. Give God a hand. Now sometimes the devil throws things at you that you in your wildest dreams would not have done. You know, sometimes the devil tempts me. And I think, what on earth is this? I know myself and I know where my weaknesses was. But sometimes he wants to sell nonsense to me. Or sometimes he wants to sell the old things, the past to me again. 
Do not take that condemnation. Do not take that guilt. Resist him steadfast in the faith and say, get behind me, Satan. When you have done with something in your life and you've laid it down, the devil will always come and try again with the old tricks. If he does not come right with the old tricks, he comes with a new one. Listen, Satan is very real. I don't love Satan and I don't believe in Satan, but I tell you, he's doing his job. And he's got an enormous big army working for him, tempting especially the Christians. He does not have to tempt the world, they're innocent. But especially Christians, that's why you will find as a Christian, you get more tempted than a non-Christian. Because you are a threat to him, not the non-Christian. So first of all, he come with his old tricks. Please, never fall for the old tricks. He come with the old tricks. But as you grow out of your weaknesses, your, the old ways that you have lived in starts to fade away and the, you lose total interest in the things of the past. The things previously when you were a sinner or maybe a thing that your flesh enjoyed four years ago, now you, you, even your flesh dislike. Give God a hand. Is that not true? Things that you have that your flesh enjoy, even some sins. I mean, you don't want to sin, but sometimes, you know, sin is pleasurable for the flesh. As you grow in Jesus and grow from faith to faith and from grace to grace, the things that you liked seven years ago, that your flesh liked, now you dislike. And if Satan comes with that old trick, you say, what are you doing, devil? That is how you know it's the devil. And if, you're, if the old tricks are not working, he's coming with new ones that stun me sometimes. Where is this coming from? I know my weaknesses of the past. But this one, Satan, get behind me. I mean, you know, sometimes he will trick you and condemning yourself and feeling guilty about things that are not yours. Now, no one that lives in condemnation can live in victory. Therefore, the Bible says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who are led by the Spirit. Say, for those who are in Christ Jesus, who are led by the Spirit, there is no condemnation. There is no guilt in the work of the Holy Spirit. There is no condemnation, but only conviction. And conviction is as far from guilt and condemnation as the East is from the West, I promise you. Never ever think that the Holy Spirit will make you at guilty at all. He will convict you, please. Conviction is an awesome desire to change. To turn away from ungodliness to godliness. I mean, you cannot work up that desire. When you stand up in the morning and uh, you, the evil is presented to you, and you say, Lord, I don't like this thing that I'm doing. And you all of a sudden get this awesome desire to lay it down and to embrace godliness and you receive the power to embrace that godliness this is the conviction of the holy spirit never ever confuse guilt and condemnation with the conviction of the holy spirit conviction of the holy spirit is a pleasurable experience give god a hand <clears throat> hallelujah for the christian whose heart is after god the conviction of the Holy Spirit is a pleasurable experience. When you have done something wrong and all of a sudden this awesome desire to lay it down, this awesome desire to do the right thing, and I mean it's the work of the Holy Spirit and every work of the Holy Spirit in the Christian whose heart is after God is pleasurable. Give God a hand. <clears throat> Hallelujah. But to the stubborn and the one who is unwilling to yield to the Holy Spirit, you might become angry. But you will even find then that you don't feel guilty. You might, might, maybe you get angry at some of the things I preach. But go and check yourself, you don't even feel guilty. I mean, if you experience, if there's guilt that you experience when you are sitting in church and the Holy Spirit reveals certain things to you, that is either your flesh that makes you feel guilty or the devil, but not the Holy Spirit. Say, not the awesome Holy Spirit. Now, if your flesh is condemning you, just repent, please. I mean, when your flesh is condemning you, remember it's not the Holy Spirit. I mean, say to God, it's not the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 
the Holy Spirit come to convict. The devil likes to condemn us because he is the accuser of the brethren. Do not take it. When the Holy Spirit come, and, or when the, when the accuser come, and he accuses your brothers, do not believe him. And even if your brothers are wrong, back him. Give God a hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I made up my mind. I will not point a finger to any man. I will not judge any man. I will not condemn any man. Amen. I made up my mind. I will love all people. I will forgive all. Amen. Forgive all. Love all. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is the awesome ability of forgiveness. The one who is forgiven, he is the one who can forgive. Give God a hand. The one who is not forgiven, he struggles and finds it hard to forgive. The two are connected to one another. To, again, like Friday night, what the Lord said, to the degree that you are forgiving others, to the same level, to the same degree, you will experience his forgiveness but remember, His forgiveness is available to us in full. Save in full. There's nothing that God will hold back. His Holy Spirit is available in full. His forgiveness is available in full. But to the degree that you yield to Him, to that same degree, you will experience Holy Spirit. Draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Come close to me, I will come close to you. If you are willing to forgive to the full, you will experience his forgiveness to the full. And the one who receives forgiveness to the full is healed completely. Give God an end. If you are able to forgive fully, 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 you will be able to receive forgiveness fully, fully. I will not be necessary for me to pray for you when you are sick. But do not feel condemned. Because you are growing. So I'm growing out of my weaknesses. The Christian growth is a process. It is not a one-day thing. You get saved in one day, but then you are being saved. And that is a lifelong experience. Never feel condemned because you are not where the person next to you on the same level. You're not at the same level than the person next to you. You think, oh, this person is stronger than me. Oh, he's better than me. Nonsense! Say, I'm in the process of growing. Never compare yourself to the person next to you. Okay? I mean, because that is strife, it is jealousy, it is selfish, and it's competition. Never be in competition with the Christian next to you. Jesus will take you where you need to be. If you yield to his Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Pastor, but I have forgiven all as far as the Holy Spirit revealed it to you. He will still reveal some things. That's like he did with me. I explained to you on Friday night what happened to me. Hallelujah. And from there on, I just started to forgive everyone again. I just forgive. Whoever, whoever I think maybe on me somewhere or I dislike. Lord, I forgive, and I ask forgiveness for my attitude in Jesus' name. I mean, say, I, I give you my all, Jesus. I forgive all. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for forgiving me of all in the name of Jesus. I mean, are you okay? For, sin, for since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. What is it to be alive? To be alive is not to breathe. It's to experience the goodness of the Lord, the favor of the Lord, the life of Jesus in your spirit, your soul, and your body. If you are not completely there, hold on and hold out. Jesus will take you there, I promise you. Keep your faith and hold your faith. Jesus will take you there. Jesus will take you there. In the name of Jesus.